Hello, welcome to the forecast for Monday, March 23rd. So we're going to get right into this because today is going to be a little bit of an interesting one. And looking first at our precipitation type and rate. So we have obviously kind of a mess over much of the Appala Appalachian Valley and everything. So we're going to see some rain with developing with that low pressure system. Um, as pressures kind of rise to the top where we could see some snow potentially in Pennsylvania right there. And then right along the eastern coast we will see some light rain showers. Along with some thunderstorms uh, and potentially some severe ones in the parts of Georgia and Alabama. So looking into all that we're going to see... A lot of rain in places where rain isn't needed right now. We have a lot of rain that has fallen over the last few days in much of the Ohio Valley and then down into the south. So this is going to be rain on top of more rain, so that gives us that potential for flooding and flash flooding. So we're going to see how much that is as this produces, but throughout the day obviously it's going to be a little bit more severe. Okay, so looking at temperatures across the nation, we're really right about average in much of the nation. I am counting average as within 5 degrees from average. So really, we just see that uh, 10 to 15 degrees higher in parts of uh, you know Texas and much of the south and over into the obviously desert areas of New Mexico and Arizona. We do have some 10 to, 10 to 15 degree below average up in the uh, North Dakota, Minnesota area and over in the main. But obviously that's normal because of where that all is. There is a pocket of cool air also that we're counting as average but just notable because everything around it is warmer. Um, and right, basically it's Illinois. Uh, everything around Illinois has a 1 to 6 degree below average temperature, which that's just with the rain that is currently moving through much of the area. And obviously with elevation, we're going to have cooler temperatures. So we're just going to count those, um, you know, the Rockies and everything. So not too crazy. Obviously, this rain is going to be allowing much um, nicer temperatures for the next few days, but it will be raining. So we will see higher dew points obviously in the south because it is humid there and over in the california where right now there is some rain but looking at that pocket that is in the eastern part of ohio and though the western part of pennsylvania and all the way through virginia and west virginia kentucky and all those places we are seeing that pocket of uh, higher dew points with the humidity thanks to the rain that is currently heading through that area now there is some higher dew points in the parts of Nebraska and Kansas and in the Missouri. Um, that is going to be what is filing out with that rain and a potential severe threat for tonight that we will get into in a little bit. But some notable higher dew points we see in parts of West Virginia and look into central Oklahoma. We are seeing dew points in the upper 50s in some places and the further south you get obviously you get close to 70 with some of that thick dense air. So looking into the south, we obviously have some unstable cape because of this super high humidity and the thunderstorms that are already down there. Look in the parts of uh, southern Alabama and right along the panhandle of Florida there and maybe parts of the very eastern parts of Louisiana. You can expect some uh, potential thunderstorms there. We aren't really worried about them right now as of the 18C time today, but it's going to be something that will be notable for later on tonight that there is that unstable cape in the region. So adding on to that um, unstable cape, we are seeing a bit of, uh, we're seeing some of that blue, which is that 1 to 2 range on the energy helicity index um, for the 18Z hour today. But really looking at this, we're seeing, you know, there's that line that goes from Dallas all the way um, kind of up towards just southwest of Atlanta. And that's going to lead potentially with some of those dew points. We're seeing those dew points line up perfectly with that, those super high ones. So that's going to allow some of those thunderstorms to get some kind of pick up and some spin. Really look towards the panhandle of Florida, um, right where it's with Alabama right there, because that is where our highest helicity is, and it's looking like it's a uh, pretty much closer to a 2. So not huge readings or anything, but it's just something to keep an eye on in case some of these thunderstorms decide to go severe. Um, it's going to be right around that region of central to southern Alabama and the panhandle of Florida where we could expect the most severe ones. Not much surprise here. We are seeing the same readings for the supercell composite at the surface. 
Uh, we are seeing them right there at that part that shuts down where Mississippi and Florida connect to Alabama. So you can expect the worst to be there, and but looking at the generalized region, we are seeing the worst of it potentially in uh, the central and south Alabama portion, but also be looking towards Texas in some areas. We could get some uh, supercells there, uh, very low chance there. We're seeing that one to kind of four area there, but we are seeing the, you know, four to really 10-ish area uh, in Alabama. So just be prepared there for p potential severe storms because this is something that all the dew points and everything are pointing at, you know, that Alabama region. And that's just for the 18Z hour. We have a whole other part we're going to talk about um, of what could happen overnight. So this was something interesting that I uh, went ahead and downloaded yesterday for this forecast and it's something that has changed that's why we're recording this on the day of rather than the night prior is because things changed pretty quickly so the storm prediction center posted that day one categorical outlook that went from monday at uh 100 z's to tuesday at uh 1200 z's so looking at that you know we're seeing that really monday morning all the way through tuesday morning we're gonna see storms during this time and they are heavily condensed weirdly um in california for that reading from yesterday that's where we have that marginal threat but note too this is not the current one that we are using so we had that threat really potential for thunderstorms um in the most southwestern part of california and then we just saw some general thunderstorms in kansas and then the big swath of it in the far eastern portions of texas all the way up into southern kentucky and then also too you can't forget the uh, hatteras islands uh over in north carolina and that was just basically some leftover unstable cape that was going to be potentially severe that was going off the coast early in the morning hours. But looking at this, this was something that we looked ahead of time and was like, okay, it's going to be a Tuesday severe threat because we are expecting Tuesday to be severe. Well, that changed. So we are looking at this. It's just thunderstorms. And look what was posted this morning. So this is the basic convective discussion that was posted on the uh, SPC's website. And so it's the day one convective outlook by the uh, Storm Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma. And it is valid from 231200 through 241200. There is a slight risk of severe thunderstorms from portions of Kansas, Oklahoma, to Missouri and Arkansas. So the summary of it is large hail appears to be likely Monday night over parts of Kansas, Oklahoma, and southern Missouri, and Arkansas, along with a few strong wind gusts. Isolated strong storms are also possible during the day from Alabama into Georgia. So continuing, the latest water vapor imagery depicts a well-defined upper trough off the southern California coast, shifting inland in line with the latest model guidance. This feature is forecasted to eject across the four corners by 24 to 0 Zs at 90 uh, knots, reaching 500 millibar speed max translates into the southern Rockies before reaching the Texas Panhandle by midnight. In response to the shortwave, surface front that is draped across the southeast Texas will return north across the southern plains as lee surface low gets dislodged into the Oklahoma panhandle. While the strong boundary layer heating is forecasted across uh, New Mexico and West Texas, forecast soundings are quite dry west um, of the 100 longitude. As a result, additional moistening beyond peak heating will be necessary for convective development. And that kind of summarize what that all is that dew point is going to be really important for us we have that higher dew point that will be kind of you know what i mean ejecting a little bit to that north that will allow some of these storms to have that humidity and that denseness to build so um the llj will increase after dark across the western oklahoma and the southwestern kansas area this should aid thunderstorm development after 03 z's on tuesday within exit region of approaching speed maximum initial convection will likely evolve across eastern colorado and west kansas then spread and develop east during the overnight hours north of the advancing warm front Vertical wind profiles are favor supercells, and forecast soundings strongly suggest that this activity will most uh, will mostly be elevated. Large hail is the primary risk as this activity spreads towards uh, southwest Montana and western Arkansas. So 
that all looking at that is really talking about you know we have that we have we have really tall thunderstorms which isn't a huge severe problem that's where our most severe storms are going to be at so we could see a few tornadoes with some lower ones but the big thing is hail that we're going to have a lot of hail and we'll see that reading at the end of this forecast um of what the hail and the winds are going to be like but really looking at this right now uh our biggest threat is wind and hail because these storms the taller they get the more distance from the ground from the ground they get so we're gonna see you know some really hail damage reports maybe some wind but these storms are not obviously going to be producing much um tornado uh act tornadic activity so looking at it really um it, it just some large hail is the primary risk, and it's going to spread towards southwest Montana into western Arkansas. So looking at the southeast, we are looking at some uh, lo low-level warm advection and some weak frontal coverage uh, convergence will be the primary forcing mechanisms for convection across the southwestern states today. So obviously scattered thunderstorms developed early this morning, and we will see you know some of those corridors from louisiana all the way through arkansas and tennessee that um will have some activity with some rain and that will all sag to the southeast during the pre-dawn hours as the higher pw air mass um will be pushed to the lower latitudes as the westerly flow aloft deepens. Lapse rates across this region are not particularly steep, but a high-level flow is strong enough to warrant some organizational potential, which could generate some isolated wind reports. So basically, we could see some wind damage down there. That helicity is high enough that we could potentially see a quick spin-up. Not guaranteeing it, though, because the tornado prediction um, is so low that they aren't even predicting anything. So really, our worst-case scenario is there might be a spin-up, but it won't, obviously, in that region as quick as these storms are going to be moving through today. Um, they will not be that severe. So don't expect anything right now. Um, I don't think there will be any, but the potential is there that one of these storms could have some spin with it. That helicity doesn't always mean tornadoes. It could just mean that there is some broad rotation, and so we could see some supercells developing within that region. So here is the true um, categorical chart, you could call it, uh, the prediction for today. So we are seeing the really s that slight over the northeast parts of Oklahoma and southeast parts of Kansas and then a little bit into that Arkansas, Missouri area. So we still do have that marginal threat to the south now, but looking, we have thunderstorms predicted to happen um, over parts of eastern Nevada, south parts of Idaho, Utah, and even parts of northwest Oregon. And then you still have the east coast uh, potential thunderstorms, but nothing that is all that bad. So analyzing this a little bit more, we are seeing, you know, right that that panhandle is now excluded. So really, we're seeing this morning time hours is when that helicity could be the highest here. So that is happening right now. But looking at the parts of Alabama and into Georgia, we could see that potential across there. Um, it's going to miss Atlanta just to the south, but you know that's where our marginal threat is. So expect some severe thunderstorms into the late morning hours, into the early afternoon. But really, we're going to start shifting our focus because this is a model run from Monday at 12 Z's to Tuesday at 12 Z's. So th during this 24 hours, we are going to see that really the northeast. So we're seeing Tulsa, Oklahoma, and uh, parts of uh, you know, the south, really it's southeast part of Kansas is where right along that state line is really um, where's where I think the most will happen. Because as it said in the discussion, it's going to be coming out of Colorado. So you can kind of see that little shape that cuts off the southeast and panhandle part of Oklahoma. So we're going to see everything in the, north, the northeast part of Oklahoma, but it's going to stay away really from Oklahoma City. So if you live near Tulsa and right along the state lines right there of where Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas, and Oklahoma are touching, um, right there is where our highest percentage is going to be for these severe storms that are producing um, near the Oklahoma City area. So that's going to be overnight tonight. So don't expect that during the daytime hours, but just be prepared tonight for potential severe storms. That's where our highest percentage is at. So looking at the wind, um, this is 
really overnight is where this severe threat is. We could for the wind. We could see obviously that part of Alabama and Georgia right there. That is going to be during the daytime hours of Monday. Here we're going to see that in the middle of the afternoon. We will see that five percent, which really means that there's going to be occasional wind gusts. There will be some stronger wind, but there's not a huge threat all day. So we're going to see at times you might have with some storms some heavier wind gusts and some other storms not so much. But we could see some severe thunderstorm warnings today so just be prepared to uh, strap down your stuff if that occurs because you don't want everything flying everywhere but let's look at really that Oklahoma area that wind um, section is matching perfectly with that slight um, risk of severe weather and that's where we're gonna get that heavier wind is really it's uh, the middle of that is Tulsa so basically, if you live in Tulsa, just be prepared for severe weather. You're going to have some wind gusts today. There even is a hail threat here that we're going to check in a second. But really, right along, if you're in Oklahoma, the eastern part, and then right along the western part of Arkansas, that's where we're going to see the most wind is with these storms that are developing there. And as I talked about, there is that overnight hail threat. Now, there could be some during the day in uh, Alabama and into uh, parts of Georgia, but really the Alabama side of that. But looking at that shape again, we are matching the same shape as the where the slight and marginal parts of the severe thunderstorms potential is at. So really, Tulsa, you're the target of this again. So hail is the really the, the as it said in the discussion, hail is going to be the biggest threat today. Wind is in the southeast part of the U.S. That's where we're going to see the, the highest chance of wind. But looking into the hail, we're going to see that in the parts of northeast Oklahoma is where our kind of target range for that is in the southeast parts of Kansas. So just be prepared for that um, as some of these storms will be tall enough that hail is going to be the main factor. But where there is hail, there is also that higher chance of tornadoes. So just be prepared all day today because this is a severe day and we are starting to ramp up the severe season so that is something we're gonna have to keep watching out for is some of these storms and where hail is at that is where we're gonna have some severe weather so just be prepared today and into tonight and check us out tomorrow as the potential for severe storms could rise again